Food delights us, food pleases us, it tickles our taste buds, it brings us together around tables, we can talk about food for hours. Many of the things we associate with food are good things, they're happy things, they're happy times. We can all think of a favorite food, a favorite time of being around food. And so in this way, it might seem like food isn't a problem. Food is a kind of solution. Food is a good thing about our human world. And yet if we pan back out, if we look at the whole world, what we quickly see is that the future of food over the next decade, the next 50 years, the next 100 years, the next 1,000 years, is composed of a series of wicked problems. A series of problems that we can't solve from the perspective of any single discipline. My personal story in the study of food began from the perspective of ecology. I'm an ecologist by training. And I sought to understand this curious food called sourdough bread. Sourdough bread depends on sourdough starters. Sourdough starters depend on a mix of bacteria and yeast. And I became interested in the question of where do those bacteria and yeast come from? They turn out to come partially from the flour, partially from the air, but largely from the hands of the bakers. This led me to study bakers, which led me to engage bread making and what bakers know and to study with bakers around the world. And as I did that, what I and my colleagues discovered is that the bodies of bakers are actually covered in the yeasts and bacteria found in sourdough starters. And so their occupation of working with sourdough starters actually changed their bodies. But as I talked about this work with people, I realized what I was telling them about was very different from what they told me because what sourdough bread bakers often wanted to talk about was the way in which their bread related to their family. And so I suddenly realized that my perspective was too narrow. I needed a historian. And so I engaged my friend Matthew Booker, who's an environmental historian. And Matthew began to compile oral histories of the ways in which people talked about their sourdough starter. And, and in doing so, began to recognize that people talked about their sourdough starter the way they talked about family members. They used kin terms. They named their starters. They, they mourned when their starters died. They, they cried when their starters of their great-grandmothers produced food. And so there was this historical element. But then as we got more interested in that historical element, we realized we were missing a piece because we knew the written history of sourdough since the microbiologist Pasteur discovered yeast and discovered the role of microorganisms in producing bread. But we couldn't go back in time beyond that to figure out what did people think about sourdough starters before Pasteur. And so I reached out to a theologian, Amina Alatis Bradford. And Amina b began to work with religious texts from Judaism, from Christianity, to see what religious scholars had written about leaven before Pasteur, which gave us a window into to how people thought about this leaven before we knew the role of microbes, which led to another question, which led to another question, which eventually led us to incorporate into our team ecologists, evolutionary biologists, geneticists, theologians, historians, psychologists, artists, poets, all to study sourdough bread. And of course, sourdough bread is a tiny thing in the big world of food. And so I started in my work to step back to study other kinds of food, kimchi in Korea, miso in Japan, all sorts of fermented fish in the far north, each with their own story, each embedded in culture and context. And, and this really, for me, was the origin of the recognition that food was a wicked problem. It really depended on all these lenses. And in my particular story, it was only through all those lenses and disciplines that we could really pull together the picture of sourdough. What we're gonna try to do in this course is something far more ambitious. We're gonna try to pull together the picture, the story of food. What are the wicked problems of food? One of the wicked problems relates to the question of how do we sustain a growing global population? A population that's not only becoming more numerous, but individually demanding more calories, more food per capita. By some measures, there's enough food today on Earth to feed the growing population we anticipate. The chief problem is instead, how do we equitably distribute that food? 
But then another wicked problem that interfaces with those first two is the reality that in the context of climate change, our ability to produce food is going to change. Some regions that are bread baskets are no longer going to be able to be bread baskets. How do we deal with those challenges? Then there's the question of what kind of food we should produce. Should it be organic? Should it be intensive, industrially produced food? Should it feature flavor? Should it feature nutrition? Should it be ground up cubes that have everything we need, but that, that no longer look like the foods we used to think about? Who decides the answers to those questions? Who decides what you should eat? Who decides what I should eat? Who decides what somebody on the other side of the earth should eat? That's a very wicked problem. And then there's the additional problem. If we look globally, a huge proportion of the terrestrial earth is now primarily devoted to agriculture. That agriculture, like our own bodies, depends on wild nature. It depends on species that provide services to agriculture, species that provide services to us. How do we continue to grow ever more crops while at the same time sustaining the wild nature that we all depend on? What does a sustainable agricultural future look like? And especially, what does it look like if we're thinking beyond 10 years, beyond 20 years, what if we're thinking about a thousand years? And there are trickier questions. We grow attached to the foods we know from our childhoods, from our cultures, from our regions. But should those be the same kinds of food we're eating in the future? Should we still be eating mammals? Should we still be eating birds? Should we be focusing on insects? Or should we be using bacteria to create things that are mammal-like or bird-like? Or should we be making petri dish mammals and petri dish birds? Th these are really tricky questions. And they're questions that even if you just focus on the scientific part of the question, it's challenging. But then if you step back, you realize that, that a question about what we should eat also has a psychological component. It also has a cultural component. It also has an ethical component. And every one of these wicked problems has all of these dimensions. And the other thing to recognize is that these wicked problems have global versions. We can pan back out. If you imagine the image of Earth getting smaller and smaller as we look at it from ever greater distance, th there's the question of how we take this planet and its biosphere and use it to produce what we need. But we can also zoom back in, zoom back in on North Carolina, zoom back in on North Carolina State University, and we know that these problems are also relevant to our daily lives here. We know that some of you are struggling to find enough food. You're struggling to find nutritious food. You're struggling to think about what to eat. And so these are wicked problems that really cut very close to home. That's the tricky news. That's the challenge. But the great news is that we have all the pieces here at NC State to work together to solve these wicked problems. And you, when you arrive here, are going to be part of that work building toward a solution. You have the opportunity to train deeply in the particular discipline that most interests you. Maybe that's film studies, maybe it's anthropology, maybe it's engineering, there are a lot of engineers here. Maybe it's design or ecology. You need to know your discipline well. You need to know its specific skill sets. But you also need to be ready to take those disciplinary skill sets and to work with other people to solve these problems. And what you're going to see in this class are examples of some of our greatest scholars from NC State working together on these problems. And what you should look for is the way in which they partner, but also the ways in which their different perspectives present these problems in different contexts. And you'll even see some cases in which very smart people disagree as to what the solution is or even as to what the problem is. And that's what we hope for. We hope that we're challenging each other. We're thinking about these problems. We're thinking about how to look at them, how to solve them. And we're thinking about how to work together toward these solutions. So if you complete this course over the next weeks, you're gonna learn about food from so many different people and so many different perspectives that it will totally change how you think about what you eat every day. 
That on its own to me is exciting. But what's even more exciting is that when you land at NC State, you're gonna learn about wicked problem after wicked problem from all of these different perspectives. And what you really have in this course is a sampling of the way that you can think about all of the things that challenge us as we move forward and all of the ways that we rise to those challenges. I'll end with this. On behalf of the entire Wicked Problems team, we're so excited to have you on campus. And we're so excited to have you as part of the team with which we work to make real change in the world. I think one of the secrets people don't tell you when you go to college is that as soon as you arrive, that you're a scholar. You're part of our team of thinkers. You're part of our team of change makers. And so we're ready to have you as part of that team. We're ready to bring your ideas into what we do. And so welcome and thank you. And in this course, pay attention to the things you think you're least interested in because they may be the ones that change you the most.